Kremlin has accused the United States of preparing the European Union for a direct armed conflict with Russia. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov voiced these accusations against Washington on Monday. In case Zelensky's regime fails, as a back plan, the United States is preparing the continental Europe to rush into a suicidal adventure and enter into a direct armed conflict with Russia, Sergei Lavrov said. Addressing the international symposium titled, Creating the Future, the top Russian diplomat claimed that Anglo-Saxons expect Russia's defeat in the ongoing war in Ukraine, just as Hitler did in his time, gathering most of European countries under the Nazi banner. The foreign minister also claimed that the ruling elites of a number of European countries do not see a future for themselves in a multipolar world and are looking for salvation from an overseas hegemon, meaning the United States. The minister stressed that Russia is not close to a dialogue with the West. However, Moscow will consider proposals to resume contacts, taking into account its own national interests, Lavrov said. Earlier, the Russian foreign ministry said that the West's war against Russia still had hybrid elements, but was increasingly turning into a real, direct, war. The ministry also stated that the United States and its satellites were trying to turn entire Eurasia into an arena of geopolitical confrontation, adding that it was this aggressive course that provoked the Ukrainian crisis triggered by the coup in February 2014. The village of Koronevo in the Kursk region, where there were no Ukrainian armed forces or military operations, was completely looted. Russian soldiers robbed not only stores and pharmacies, but also the homes of ordinary citizens. During the Kursk operation, the Ukrainian armed forces came very close to Koronevo, but never entered it. The Russian army took up defensive positions there, and most of the local residents were evacuated. When they returned home, people found their houses looted and destroyed. One of the residents filmed the aftermath on video. Apparently, a group of Russian military personnel lived in his house for some time. Everything is turned inside out, thrown out. Cartridges are lying around. Some kind of military hat, camouflage jackets, gloves, Russian army, remains of dry rations, pouches. In short, they ate. Shit didn't worry. There's even a chevron. There are no TVs, no computer, no monitor, nothing. Everything is upside down. The toilet is full of shit. There is no window. They ate, drank and had snacks. The Russian complained. When he left his home, he put up a sign that read, everything is stolen, to stop further looting. Residents of Koronevsky district are complaining en masse about looting by Russian soldiers. However, neither the Russian Armed Forces Command nor the local authorities are listening to them. The military continues to settle in civilian homes, rob them and kill domestic animals. Kursk region governor Alexei Smirnov reacted cynically to the residents' complaints about looting. He began to insist that this was an information leak by Ukrainian special services. This caused a wave of indignation among the residents of the region. According to them, Russian armed forces soldiers are settling in houses without any embarrassment, claiming that they have the right to do so. The police, including the military, do not respond to complaints and refuse to initiate criminal cases for looting. Earlier, residents of Kursk region complained to Putin about the Russian army of marauders. People write that there was not a single day of Ukrainian army presence in Korenevo, but after the arrival of Russian military in the village, dozens of residential buildings, shops, gas stations and pharmacies were looted. They say there are numerous accounts of men in Russian military uniforms breaking down doors of evacuated homes, taking away belongings and valuables, and shooting dogs to stop them from interfering with the looting. Russian soldiers also steal cars and agricultural equipment that their owners did not manage to take away. It's all. Вот. 
Вон, армия России. Теперь не был пиздоболом. Остатки всех пайков. Вон тут подшумки. Армейский плов. Да, плов поставляли тут армейский. Короче, жрали, срали. Не тужили. Вот он. Шеврон. Вот тут пайков. Ну, тут Димки на это хоккейные подрасовали защиты, но все повывернули. Врач вывернулся, все вернул. Телевизоров нету, компьютера, монитора нету, ничего нету. Это все разобрали, еще и чужое притянули. Ну, Телевизор в комнате тут тоже все он вернул. Ну, покажу сейчас кухню. В туалете темно не видно, но полный унитаз. Насратого. Вот я сейчас буду сливать отопление. Вот. Окна нету. Мы тут кушали, пили, закусывали. Вот как-то так. Ну это вот что с гаражом. Ну, мастерки, шпателя болтаются, стремянка вот, заготовки на заборе, человеку делал на полицейской. А он полки все пустые. Ни инструментов, ни болгарок, ни перфораторов маленьких, больших, ни больших болгарок, ни сварки. Ничего. Все по вытянули, блядь. Все, закрыли, закрутили. Домик, домик, милый домик. Таблички он все спижено повесил. During the Ukrainian operation in Russia's Kursk Oblast, launched in August 2024, the Russians have lost almost 8,000 soldiers, which is about 15 battalions. The press service of the commander of the air assault forces of the armed forces of Ukraine said this. The exact number of Russian losses over that period of time amounted to 7,980 people. The air assault forces noted that serious achievements were also made in terms of Russian equipment and weapons. In total, 58 tanks, 182 infantry fighting vehicles, 46 armored personnel carriers, 136 artillery systems, two multiple launch rocket systems, 592 vehicles, 46 electronic warfare systems and other special equipment were destroyed or damaged. The paratroopers captured nearly 300 Russian soldiers and seized nine tanks, nine armored personnel carriers, nine guns, six mortars, etc. The air assault forces reported that during the Kursk operation, they destroyed three helicopters and 146 Russian drones. In addition, 9,874 Russian FPV drones were suppressed by electronic warfare systems. Ukraine launched its cross-border incursion into Kursk Oblast on October the 6th, claiming to initially seize some 1,300 square kilometers, but recently facing mounting pressure as Russia pulls in reinforcements. Ukrainian troops continue active operations in the Kursk direction, destroying the enemy's combat potential for the third month in a row. Through open source research, MediaZana, a Russian independent media outlet together with BBC Russia, confirmed the names of 75,382 Russian soldiers who had been killed since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. Since MediaZana's last update in mid-October, the names of 2,483 Russian soldiers have been added to the list of casualties. The journalists note that the actual figures are likely significantly higher as their verified information comes from public sources such as obituaries, posts by relatives, regional media reports and statements from local authorities. The last few weeks amid ongoing battles in Ukraine's eastern oblasts, as well as in Russia's Kursk Oblast, Russian forces have experienced some of its heaviest losses since the start of the full-scale war. According to some experts, the surge in losses in recent months may be one of the factors behind the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia, which reportedly began fighting alongside Russian forces in limited numbers on October the 29th. According to Midiazana's estimates, a majority of those killed in action come from Rostov, Sverdlovsk, Bashkiria, and Chelyabinsk oblasts, as well as the Buryatia Republic. A surge of recruitment by the Kremlin in the predominantly Muslim regions of Bashkortostan and Tatarstan have also showed an increase in those killed in action in recent months.